It's hard to believe that anything about this is real. It's there, tall, majestic, and straight out of sci-fi novels. Although many rocket scientists mocked the idea of catching Starship with Mechazilla when it was first proposed, Elon Musk and SpaceX are now gradually proving how shallow those initial assessments were. They are ready for the Starship flight with the first chopstick landing. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. After achieving success on the fourth flight with about a 95% success rate, SpaceX is aiming for a new goal for Starship on the upcoming fifth flight, testing the capture of Starship. Specifically, instead of a soft landing in the sea, Super Heavy will return to Earth and head towards the land where Mechazilla and the launch pad are located. To do this, SpaceX has made thorough preparations. First, I must mention the careful planning and the confident public deployment led by Elon Musk. People often say that when you want to achieve something, you should envision its success. I know space is always risky, but I admire Elon's confidence when he talks about his projects. At the beginning of 2024, Musk publicly announced the plan to catch Starship to all his employees in the media. So both the booster and the ship come back to the launch site. Yeah, that's what I mean by the fact. I mean that the thing is a success. We need a giant tower with customized arms to lift the booster and the ship onto the launch pad. For a booster or starship catch, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. Based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk, the arms will mainly move in one dimension, open or close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they are closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last-second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could shave a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships still are going to need legs. However, this also requires close coordination between the chopsticks and the rocket. For the chopsticks, they need to be flexible and stable enough to withstand external factors. In previous launches, we have seen some issues with a chopstick arm. For example, there were problems like slow movement and strong oscillations during operations, leading to unnecessary breakdowns. Therefore, to achieve the goal of capturing by the end of June, SpaceX conducted some slap tests on the chopstick arm. They used a simple test tank called B14.1 to simulate parts of the actual booster placed on the launch pad. This allowed them to practice and improve the catching process without endangering the expensive booster. After that, the catching arm, part of the chopstick system on the launch tower, underwent tests for opening and closing, moving up and down with the goal of eliminating bounces or vibrations when the arm decelerates. This requires sophisticated control systems and possibly cushioning mechanisms. Additionally, SpaceX conducted these tests to improve the chopstick's fast movement speed, increasing their precise positioning ability to catch while also being able to stop smoothly. Balancing speed and precision is crucial to catch successfully without damaging the booster. If you would like a more detailed analysis of the chopsticks tests, check out our previous video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this video. Although there hasn't been a drop test like we expected, I am sure SpaceX is being cautious with its development steps. They have a prerequisite that they will only proceed with the catch if everything is in order. Otherwise, the booster will be redirected to a land in the water. As something that's never been done before, it's clearly not without its risks. But they are doing what they can to perfect it enough to manage those risks. Another issue that SpaceX and Elon need to address to successfully catch is the problem with the ship in the Super Heavy. Can Starship accurately hit such a narrow landing target? Normally, we witness Falcon 9 descending quite rapidly during landings. This is commonly referred to as the suicide burn, as finding the right timing is crucial. If initiated too late, the rocket might crash and forcefully explode. If ignited too early, it uses up excessive fuel or even rises back and flips over, resulting in a detonation. We've witnessed both scenarios with Falcon in the past. The rationale behind this is twofold. First, to use as little fuel as possible, hovering even for a few seconds requires a significant 
adequate fuel reserve. Secondly, an empty Falcon 9 is very lightweight, approximately 550 kilos, while the Merlin engines are powerful, making it challenging to decelerate adequately with the booster alone. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized, partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and then plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launching tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. This is certainly a plausible scenario, and at least Elon's aware of this challenge. The rocket will need to be robust and operate flawlessly during the ascent and acceleration phases to meet the requirements for the catch attempt. Musk emphasized the certainty of precise landing capabilities through thrust control, a technology SpaceX has successfully implemented in the past. Importantly, the rocket must undergo a hover phase combined with a motion of the arms. This setup seems to be a perfect answer to the question of landing within the narrow constraints of Starship. Once again, we can compare it to Falcon 9, the workhorse that can land in a relatively small circle, even on an unmanned ship floating out there in the ocean. When the Falcon rocket lands on the ground, it almost always hits the bullseye on the landing pad. The Falcon can only steer with grid fins, lacks gimbaled engines, and has no ability to hover gracefully. If we look at Blue Origin's New Shepard booster, it can perform some very low ground landings with controlled descent using fins and gliding, but still lacks that gimbaled engine control. So, with all the advanced technology in Starship, the combo of grid fins, gimbal engines, and the ability to hold mid-air will likely enable it to hover. Honestly, what SpaceX has prepared for Super Heavy to complete the catching progress has been pretty consistent throughout the production and upgrading of the rocket, so we shouldn't be too worried. They will continue to make changes, even if anything happens. Moving towards the fifth flight, it's not hard to see SpaceX and Elon are quite confident about it. Bold ideas are never easy, but once SpaceX and Elon achieve this, it's going to bring enormous benefits that will make us all marvel. With arms that can hold and lift up and down vehicles, it will be much more convenient than previous landing methods. For example, it will not need other cranes to lift and move the vehicle to other places for recovery like the landing pad system. It also doesn't need a ship to salvage like the landing at sea or using a ship to carry vehicles over long distances to recovery places like a drone ship. Instead, it can help the vehicle immediately be repaired, recovered, and refueled on OLM and be ready to go for the next flight in about an hour. Nice. In addition, it will also help Starship optimize mass because Mechazilla and OLM arms help to hold and stabilize booster and Starship, so it does not need landing legs. As a result, Starship can reduce a significant part of the mass, which is considered an enemy of vehicles when launching into space, as well as increase the payload for the cargo it carries. In interplanetary missions, an extra pound or kilo of cargo will be extremely valuable. That's the end? Not yet. The above benefits are only short-term. This Mechazilla system has many other long-term benefits, too. So a new record will be created. SpaceX will become the company that can launch and recover the biggest and most powerful rocket in the world. That record will probably take a lot of other time for aerospace organizations and companies to catch. For SpaceX, with a system that can partly or fully reuse the vehicle, they can save a lot of costs, which is important for a project that requires a big investment like Starship. But to achieve this, Elon and SpaceX will need to test and improve their Mechazilla system. This is also one of SpaceX's major objectives in the upcoming fifth flight. Currently, preparations for that fifth flight are in final stages. Starship 30's just completed the replacement of all 18,000 new heat shield tiles and has performed a static fire test to assess the engine's operation as well as the adhesion of the new shields. Meanwhile, Booster 12, after completing its static fire test on July 16th, has been returned to Mega Bay, promising a reappearance soon with its crown. The issues with the orbital launch mount seem to have been satisfactorily resolved since Starship's fourth test launch. It's really exciting, and I can't wait for the fifth launch, and all of us will witness something never before seen in real life. At this point, we certainly don't want to watch these rocket launches or catching processes in 3D simulation videos like we are now. Let's wait and see if Elon and SpaceX turn those 3D plans into live-action videos. If that turns out to be true, we could begin the countdown to the day when us humans will finally set our first footprints on the red planet. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.